this is a video on installing the rear view camera and the parking sensors this is where you get your parking sensors four parking sensors color coded to the car sticky pads stick inside the bumper just need to drill a hole on the outside so that's those four there's your uh, speaker for the um, audio and the parking sensors main video camera hole saw power cable main box instructions sticky pads that's it nice and simple onto the camera so you've got your uh, video lead through to the front power lead and reversing camera itself which is also part of the uh, number plate light license plate light that's it right, I'll show you roughly on the bench how everything wires up you got your little plugs on the all four sensors they plug into A, B, C and D on your main box your buzzer speaker goes into the buzzer hole power lead into a power hole and then the video cable plugs into the last one now this is a bit different to normal sensors because it's got the camera what you've got you've got two leads plug your camera into there and then the camera lead that would go and normally go to the front is that one so basically that means that your distance recognition from the parking sensors is then portrayed onto the video image from the reversing camera also we'll de demonstrate that a bit later on power wise you've got this one's from the camera this one's from the parking sensors they both need fasten up together now negative negative positive to positive positive feed is from your reversing lights negative feed is from any earthing point what we've also got on the video lead is this wire here both ends um, again this also picks up from your positive feed from your reversing lights and it's the trigger cable this is what triggers the camera sorry this is what triggers the head unit to recognize that it needs to switch into reversing mode and then display a camera uh, display an image so that fastens up with these ones in in the boot area that fastens up with the head unit uh, in on the dash otherwise we've got is obviously these two here are the original wire but these will replace the original wires for the uh, license plate number plate light and that's about it okay first of all starting the for bumper you've got 10 of these m8 bolts throughout the bottom part of the right of the um, bumper Now behind each wheel well, there are two other ones as well, this uh, basically protects the uh, wheel arch liner, these need removing as well. Peel it back, you can actually remove a wheelie if you really want to, it's not really necessary, you can get in behind it, because you now need to get your long reach another one that is right at the top end here roughly where my hand is just there get along with extension straight up and unwind obviously do that for both sides okay inside removing the trim 
use a trim tool uh, some of the plastic ones we can bend a little bit when these little uh, studs are very tight you can try a metal stud remover but they can't always get in because of the shape that's what we look like two part thing it's just slide out and then you can pull them out remove as many as you can find Uh, you got this little plastic panel here on the on the uh, tunnel part. Three studs on that. And put it to safety. Uh, this section just clips off. You got three clips on that bit. And then you can start removing your panel. Now you got your light cover. Again, another three studs on here, all hidden. And now you want to be uh, closing your boot and opening the lid up into maintenance mode. Don't need to put the, uh, the actual roof away just so that the back part of the boot lid is facing all upwards. Movie pla plastic panels, and now you got uh, M8 studs here to remove the rear lights. Carefully pop through your rubber seal. Not forgetting to, of course, to remove your plug coupler first. You just just twist off here so you can get at it a bit better. Little clip just there where my thumb is, and it pops open. Push it through and uh, put it to a safe place. Same goes for the uh, left hand side as well. And again, put it in a safe place. Okay, now to removing the bumper. Get on your plastic plot pry tools and just basically feed it in the gap here. Just gently press it down and the bumper will come away. There are three clips on each side and then it is basically jammed in. Uh, there are clips here as well. You can just put your very thin pry tool in there and it will slowly ease its way out. A bit of tugging, a bit of prying. There's not really a lot to actually pry. You can't really get in there very well, but it does eventually come out with a little bit of persuasion. Being very careful, of course, not to drop the bumper. And there you go. Disconnect your uh, number plate lights. put onto a protected surface whether it's on a stand or as I've got here on a rug and there we go the bumper is actually marked already by BMW you can't very well see it in this picture but there are four marks on here for each of the sensors 
The two center ones I do recommend moving out by one inch because you've got these two metal studs on the uh, bumper uh, absorber that will get in the way of aftermarket ones. So if you move it to one inch outside of that area, uh, you'll miss that completely. I know it's from experience because I didn't and I had to modify something to uh, get it in there. So using the marks on there, drill your hole through. Now after I've done this I did think that I had actually made a mistake by drilling from the inside out because it did leave a ridge. I did actually notice afterwards there was actually a ridge on the inside as well. Um, so I do suggest getting a Stanley blade here and very very carefully just slicing across the surface of the bumper um, just to clear off a bit of plastic. I'll show you here, here you go, you can just see on that one a bit of excess, as I say, get a nice good sharp Stanley blade straight across there uh, and it will take it off cleanly. Okay, before you uh, stick your uh, sensors in get an alcohol wipe and give a good clean around. You may have seen I, I did actually wipe the surface anyway just to give it a general clean but now I'm actually cleaning it with an alcohol wipe as well. Set out your sensors. Peel the back in and um, start putting them in. Press them down nice and tight. I do suggest leaving the sensor in while you're putting it in to make sure it is centered on the hole correctly. Try to keep them as straight and flat as possible and not twisted in the hole. Now unfortunately I did actually break one of my um, sticky pads, it snapped on the joint so I used some gaffer tape and just stuck it stuck it down as best I could. Um, I have tested it since and it is absolutely fine, it's, it's spot on, it's not a problem. Right, as you can see here, so working from the left side we've got sensor A, B, C and D to the right hand side. That's important. Um, because you're going to now run your uh, wires out, lengthen your wires out, tape them together, tape them along, so your longest one will be D, your shortest one will be A. Okay, you now need to make a hole in the grommet. I chose the uh, right hand side one. Initially put in a hole just in the grommet, but because of the amount of cables it actually worked out better just to slice it from the bottom up. And then slowly feed your spaghetti amount of wire through the hole, making sure that you don't twist any of your cables like I seem to have done it here. So a quick tidy up before you go any further, you don't want any knots in these cables and then feed them all through. Okay, now for your uh, park Sorry, correction. Now for your uh, number plate light and uh, camera. Just clip them in. Right, this is what I use because the uh, wires don't match up, so I use some uh, two pin waterproof connectors from eBay. Wire them into the, uh, the lights for the uh, reversing camera LED, and uh, I also replaced the, uh, the other one as well so the light, light colour would match. We just crimp on, seal up. And away you go. Now your uh, video cable and power cable for the camera are going to be outside of the car so I suggest once you've um, put them together put a bit of insulation tape around them. It doesn't really get wet down there you could have a bit of moisture, condensation etc in the area so you don't want any, uh, any of that getting into the lead so just tape it up and it'll be absolutely fine. and feed uh, any excess back into the car. No point leaving excess out uh, in the bumper area. And uh, it's time to put your bumper back on. That's it, you're finished outside now. So into the boot for wiring. 
And again, sort all your wires out so you know where everything is. And it's uh, time to start plugging everything into your control box. Like I say, your longest lead for your sensors is D, the shortest lead is A, so you can work out which one's which to go into the box. Now I found a nice little empty spot in the polystyrene container just the other side of the roof module and tucked everything in there. Uh, it is a massive cable so you can sort it out a little bit later on but you want to be testing making sure everything works first before you actually hide it away. Now I have altered what I've done since I did this initially. I did power off the reversing light completely to power everything and the neutral. Um, it's not a good idea, it doesn't like it. So I've uh, actually fitted a relay in there now instead. So I've just taken a trigger wire from the reversing lights and used the negative from the reversing lights for that. I'll show you the relay wiring in a minute. Now you want to feed some wires through. So remove your um, kick plate trim. That just clips up and then pulls up completely. You'll then get to uh, this trim just here. Remove your rubber seal so you can get at everything properly. You got one clip at the bottom here and there is a 10mm nut, plastic nut just behind the just see it in the back of the picture. Okay, back in the boot area, you move the trim forward on the right hand side. This is actually using one of the metal uh, stud extracting tools. Normally not too bad, this one did go for a flying lesson once it released itself, but they do seem to work, but you do need a bit of room. Some of the plastic trims just don't give you that. Okay, so once your studs are all out, turn that panel out, and that allows you access to that hole right at the back there. Those cables go through, that blue cable is going through on top of the black, big black um, loom. Right, remove your trim inside the car, remove your speaker grill, remove, remove your speaker. And basically your pull wire is going to go down there, go down that hole, you see a red wire just there. And working with your hand in there and working your hand around the back, you can feed a wire through to pull. This is going to be your wire for pulling your video lead, your power lead and your speaker through into the cabin. And just pull straight through there. There's plenty of room. So here we go, first cable going through. Just feed it in nice and gently, make sure it doesn't snag on anything. And it'll pull right through to the other side. And so yes, running your cables along the uh, kick strip all the way up and to this point here. So you remove this trim, unbolt this one. This basically gives you a bit of access so you can get through. And you want to go around to the other side and remove three nuts from under the glove box. Take the panel out. There's your fuse guide, by the way. Don't forget to put it back so you know where it is. And then you've got the tricky fuse box to get out. There's a metal stud just where my fingers are there. You twist it one quarter turn, anti-clockwise, and down it comes here, you can just see it now. Now, remove, well not remove, sorry, move your cables out of the way a little bit. There is a bit of a loom that sticks into the side panel. It's a little tricky, just freeing it up, and it drops down. Once it's down, you can then slide it towards the uh, passenger seat. And actually just come down nicely. This is so you can get a feed wire back to your uh, relay to power everything up. So you need one of these. It's a piggyback jumper. Most uh, electrical stores and uh, most uh, automotive stores are obviously sell these, along with uh, a relay as well. Relay and uh, four crimps. A crimping tool. Cheap one will do it. And this is what you want. So here's one I prepared earlier. 
Got a fuse in there. I'll put a two amp fuse in. Seems to be working fine. It's been there a week and it's still working. So a nice length for cable and feed that all the way back through to the boot area and wire up your relay. Okay, so you got your 12 volt in uh, from your reversing lights, your negative from the reversing light as well. 12 volt positive feed from the fuse box, one was just done, and 12 volt feed to the camera. Okay, it looks a bit messy now, but once you've tested everything and happy with it, you can then tidy it all away. I'll put the speaker inside just below the rear speaker uh, in the little net area behind the seat. Okay, now to uh, connect up the screen. I'm using the Android touchscreen here. You could use uh, an original with uh, an adapter box or uh, any other uh, screen that receives a reverse camera. So you've got your video hookup and you've got your trigger hookup as well there. Um, I've just got this temporary now while we do a quick test. Uh, and a moment I'll show you the, uh, the proper one once it's been all fully installed back in. And uh, here we go, let's go for a test. In reverse, and here's your camera. A, B, C and D, left to right. To see, you not only got your um, reversing camera, you've got your sensor lines, which you'll see in just a moment. I'm sorry, I didn't actually turn the steering wheel up here, but when you do st turn the steering wheel, it will turn the green lines as well. There we go, we've got the indicator going on there. It's telling you what size as well, with your arrows and your distance. Take it out of gear. And you're back to whatever you're doing before. It does not, this unit does not play music while you're uh, reversing. So, that's it. You've tested it and uh, everything's uh, ready to go. So go back into your boot area, tidy your cables up and basically start putting your panels back, uh, back together. And this is your finished result. As you can see, these are just ordered from the, uh, from the online store as grey and they actually do match the BMW grey very well. Right, this is a problem with a camera though. I've had to put this little red packer in on the on the clip. I'll show you why in just a second. So I take the packer out and just put it back in. So I'm going to get some of the view on this one, but it just does not hold. Purposely made apparently for a uh, E89, but doesn't fit the hole. So I put a little packer in, put it up to one at one side, and clips in nicely, and it holds. It's been there two weeks, so. It's not too bad.